Alrighty. Howdy, neighbors, and welcome to K00, The Cannibal Boy. Uh, this is part of the same series with um, the paranormal exorcism. Or whatever it's called. <laughs> uh, I'm the worst. Alrighty. <clears throat> Cannibal Boy, let's go. Ooh, what in the fuck? Hated that. Wow. <laughs> Grab my mimic you early! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I would like to play in English, please! <laughs> oh no. The party on the door. Help a little bit for me. Question mark. And narrow views. God, I am already so scared. <laughs> I hate this already. Is it raining inside? Question mark. Fuck off. Guys. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> you know? If you've heard a story, you have to hurry up and tell someone else, or else he might just come to get you. Cool. Name the protagonist. Default. Brucey. Eight letters max. Oh, it's a whole different pop-up. You know what? Let's just keep it as Brucey, honestly. Bop. This book is partly based on a true story. Ooh, she has longer hair now. Hey, have you guys heard of the Cannibal Boy? Dots. Of course, it's the urban legend everyone's been talking about. Jade, Jade, James. Don't you two remember why we're in Jade's room with a heavy textbook on counseling psychology? Huh, I really don't. Uh, why was it again? Because we need to study. We have finals tomorrow, remember? You know how strict the professor can be. Do you want to fail the course? Jade, I was only studying abroad for a year. Since when did Borussia become such a downer? Did he get dumped or something? How should I know? Come on, Borussia. That's what's wrong. You promise we'll make fun of you together. So anyway, you heard of the cannibal boy or not? It happens, so what? You know the recent multiple homicides in the area? <laughs> According to a friend of a friend, all of the victims saw a certain boy. Then a few days later, they were found dead in their rooms. Their bodies and limbs gone, with only the heads left behind with a horrifying grimace. Even Grapeer, they all had human bite marks on their necks. Do you know what that means? The head were ripped off by the cannibal boy with his teeth. I want to meet him. Uh, is a boy's bite really that strong? Hey, Brucey, what's wrong with you? You never question the logic of an urban legend, otherwise, it's no fun. Oh, okay, sorry. But yeah, I've heard about it. So? Well, do you know about his past? What caused him to become a bloodthirsty man eater? And not the fun kind. Beats me. What? Are you going to do a case conceptualization? Or draw his genogram or something? Why not? We get to hear an interesting urban legend and get a refresher on counseling 
Psychology. Let James finish the story. Part 1. The Cannibal Boy. They said it, they said the name! The Cannibal Boy was originally just an ordinary kid who lived happily with his dad, mom, and big sister. But one day, his mom cheated on his dad and left the family, leaving the dad to become an alcoholic and everything changed. Whenever his dad was drunk, he did stuff to the big sister. The big sister resisted desperately at first, until the dad said, If you won't play with me, I'll play with your little brother. Here's your sister, right? You decide what you want. So the sister just stopped resisting and let the dad keep abusing her. She wanted to be a martyr at such a young age, huh? How very admirable. Well, that's what kids are like. Kids don't know who's responsible for the things that happen. That's why some end up believing that uh, that's why some end up believing that their mother left because they were a bad kid. The big sister was exactly that type. So even though the dad's abuse got worse and worse, and all her little brother did was cry, she shouldered it all. Nobody could deal with that much abuse. Why wouldn't she just want to run away? I don't understand. The parents don't act like parents, kids, especially ones with younger siblings, or grow up and take on the role of parents. The older sister became a mother for her brother and her dad. Besides, the way the dad was abusing the big sister, it's hard to say who the parent was. Yeah, like you've seen it. After every assault, the dad would lie on top of the sister, crying his eyes out. Mama, don't leave me. I hate you, Mama. Or you go to hell. Heh. <laughs> because the villains are the worst. I bet there was something up with his dad's mama, the cannibal boy's grandmother, right? If you keep speculating like that, the story will never end. That's why forces of pure evil in anime and comics are proper villains. You don't have to consider their background stories or anything, you can just blame them. Like Jade says, if the dad was a proper villain, the big sister would have no problem blaming him, but sadly he wasn't. In addition to putting up with her father's abuse, she had to comfort her little brother, who wasn't good for anything other than saying, I'm sorry. Don't worry, I'm fine. Fine. The sister swallowed back tears for the whole family. Tears boiling in her little body. How could she be fine? They got it worse. Then the sister protected her little brother from physical abuse. He couldn't escape the mental abuse. Unfortunately for him, the little brother looked a lot like his mom. That's right. The mom who left was some other man. He looked like his mom. Woof. You want to get bullied for being a sissy. He had prepared a lot of meat every meal and forced the brother to swallow it down. He wanted the brother to grow big and strong and not look like his mom. Even when the brother became scared of the sight of meat and threw up whenever he ate it, the dad was relentless, shoving big chunks of meat into his mouth every day. The more the dad abused him, the more he cowered. The more he cowered, the more the dad abused him. Like, and, like a curse, the dad's fears came true. The little brother really did get bullied for being a sissy, and the teachers turned a blind eye. His life became a living hell. And that's when he started having hallucinations. He saw apparitions that no one else could see and heard voices that no one else could hear. Finally, came to he came to the conclusion that evil spirits were to blame for everything. If they really were human, they wouldn't be so mean to me. Dad, my teachers, classmates, they must have all been possessed. Geez, couldn't he have asked for help? Who could they have asked? The useless teachers. You tell any of your teachers, I'll kill myself and your sister. You don't want to see your dad and big sister die, do you? I know you're a good boy. You can tell the dad's quite a character. Jeez. He's such a drama queen. I haven't got to the dramatic part yet. Don't blow your load so early, man. One day the little brother came home, heavy-footed as usual, and opened the door. 
From inside of the house came the familiar smell of alcohol mixed with blood. A broken bottle. A bloody knife. Dad's face stabbed into a pulp. Sister with her wrist lashed open. The little brother didn't have to read the suicide note on her desk to realize what had happened. Hehehe. <laughs> So it was too much for the big sister after all. Maybe I should say I'm impressed that she lasted so long. When he looked at the bloody suicide note at the table though, what he saw was... It's your fault. It's your fault, 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 it's your fault. Damn! And that instant, something snapped inside the little brother. My sister would never like that. She never write anything to hurt me. It must have been... That's right, an evil spirit. The little brother's brain rewrote what happened in order to protect himself. The voices he heard and the illusions he saw served to protect the little world he shared with his sister. The evil spirit and dad wanted to possess my sister. But she didn't want to hurt me and wanted to free dad, so she killed him and herself. But they aren't the only ones possessed by evil spirits in the world. My teachers are, my classmates are, and so many more people. If I don't do something to free all the people who are possessed, what if my dad and sister have died in vain? There's a reason for all the suffering I have to endure. So it's my turn. My turn to exercise all the evil spirits. But I can't just leave my dad and sister behind like this. Oh, I'll pack them up and take them with me. I think Dad trained me to put lots of lots and lots of meat in my diary. It was a huge hassle for the police to find the blood. I can't figure out where the victims are. Gotta leave them the heads at least. So the cannibal boy packed up his dad and sister and set out on a journey to exercise evil spirits. As the cannibal boys passed. And why only the heads of the victims are ever found. That's the last remaining shed of his conscience. James. Why is your vision of the story so different from the one I heard? Huh? How does your vision go? When the candle was a little kid, his dad always locked him out on the balcony. He would knock out he would knock on the window every night, making his dad let him in. Once you've heard that story, you have to tell someone who doesn't know it yet. You come knocking on your window at night and beg you to let him in. As soon as you open the window, you bite your head off and eat your body. Hold on a sec, dude. So now that I've heard the story of the Ken before, I have to tell someone who hasn't or come and eat me, is that right? He has something wrong. James, you wasted time telling me a story. Oh, you wasted time telling me the story at risk of failing the course. Don't tell me. Yep, you got me. How can I worry about failing this stupid course when I might get eaten tonight? Why a little Okay, I don't care in the slightest who the cannibal boy might be coming for tonight. Hey. No problem is that you fabricated so much of the story, James. Seriously. How could you possibly know what the dad did to the cannibal boy and his sister at home? Sure people shouldn't question the logic of an urban legend. But you just made that stuff up. That's different. Are you kidding me? I think you're confused, my dear. You're honestly seeing the truth in an urban legend. They practically made... Hmm. Okay. The essence of an urban legend is the blending of facts and lies. The Kenva boy's past may not have been that tragic. Or it could have been even more tragic. He may not actually exist. Or he may really come and eat Brucey tonight. That's what an urban legend's all about. What's the fun in knowing all the facts? Okay, fine. It's an urban legend. It's bound to have some lies mixed in with the truth. Nothing is certain. So there's one thing about your version that's definitely certain. And what's that? I don't know if the dad and the big sister were really possessed by evil spirits, but I'm pretty sure that it's your fault it came from the sister herself. Oh? Why do you think that? People who are too scared to stand up to bullies shift the blame onto people who are nicer than themselves. So they bully nice people and cower from the bad people. Which means 
everyone gets bullied by some bad person. It's not the work of an evil spirit. They're all just so-called nice people. throw a theme song at me. I swear to god. <laughs> oh, fuck. Hello? Did the game crash? <laughs> I think the game crashed. By the way, have you guys heard of doppelgangers? Dots. Dots. Huh? Why is it upside down? Of course, it's a popular urban legend. We just talked about the Campbell boy. And now it's doppelgangers. What happened to studying for... Oh, what happened to studying? What about the... Finals? God, this is so hard to read! <laughs> Hold on. Why is it upside down? Brucey, that's something I have to tell you. Mm. The earlier discussion enlightened me with a singular truth. What kind of truth? If we give up on finals, then it's winter break for us, starting now. Oh really? I'm gonna go home. Hold up. Let's just take a... Oh, an hour break. After that, I promise we'll study, okay? Alright, one of one of your stories. We all go down together. I don't know if I can hear you right. The double ganger with It's so hard to read! What the fuck? Why is it upside down? Can I put it right side up? <laughs> Why is it upside down? Uh, okay, then do you want what happens if you ever meet your doppelganger? Your doppelganger kills you, right? Anything else? If your doppelganger dies first, you'll 
die under similar circumstances. Oh. So... You're... What the fuck is that? Is it best? Oh. What is that? You're... B... That's a B, right? Yeah. B-E-A-B. -E fuck is a beeb? Not either way. Hold on, I'm gonna see what I can do about this. This is... So it turns out, when I started, the whole game was fucked. As you can probably tell, it was like different framing, all of that. But now we got it. <clears throat> so I'm gonna redo the whole beginning of this. By the way, have you guys heard of Double Game? That doesn't make it work. There we go. There we go! Look at this. This is a popular urban legend. We just talked about the cannibal war and not doppelgangers. What happened to studying? What about our finals? Lucy, there's something I have, I have to tell you. The earlier discussion enlightened me on a singular truth. Kind of truth. If you give them our finals, then it's winter break for us starting now. Oh, really? Go home. Hold on. Let's just take an hour break. After that, I promise we'll study, okay? Well, not so Well, we're done together, bitch. <laughs> you guys can hear you right. Double anchor, which literally means walking double, is basically a phenomenon where you and someone else witness your double. I'm sure you heard of it. Sure, who hasn't? And then, do you know what happens if you ever meet your double anchor? Your double anchor kills you, right? Anything else? If your double anchor dies first, you'll die under similar circumstances. Oh, so you're dead meat either way. I said it was a B, it was a D. That's how bad. Did you also know that doppelgangers aren't entirely fictional? I'm sure we all come across something similar in our own lives. You know what I mean? Twins. In TV shows and comics, twins often find themselves in similar situations, right? Just like... Real doppelgangers. Part 2. Doppelgangers. The main character of the story of my story are twins, a boy and a girl. Even though they are fraternal twins, they look nearly identical. As if they... They really are doppelgangers. The little boy had feminine features and typical signs of puberty didn't show. If he had put on the same clothes as his twin, people would have definitely mistaken them for sisters. All too often, boys look like girls end up being bullied. But not in the little brother's case. His big sister was extremely protective, and if anyone had mean to her little brother, she was quick to bully that person back. An eye for an eye. That's how the twins operated. Under his sister's protection, the little brother never felt insecure about his femininity. But he became very dependent on his big sister. Meanwhile, you know, the big sister always needed someone to rely on her to uphold her self esteem. And she grew to be quite passive aggressive. If her brother ever failed to notice something that she did for him, she would become overly frustrated and ignore him for days on end. Adorable, isn't she? <laughs> but regardless of all that, the twins were very close. It was as if it was only the two of them in their own little world. That is, until the big sister met. A certain handsome guy. It happened this past spring. The twins were both taking an intro to philosophy at the time. One day they were discussing animal rights in class, and the professor asked if it's okay for people to eat cats and dogs. Is that professor a moron or something? What's there to think about? We eat an adorable furball today. You might as well eat a baby tomorrow. Could you just let me finish my story, please? 
Sorry, I just really love animals. There was this handsome guy who usually sat in the corner and rarely talked. But that day he raised his hand and spoke. If we can eat chickens, pigs, and cattle, then why not dogs and cats? That seems awfully inconsistent to me. So I'm just so afraid that this is gonna blow up there. For this argument, the little brother had a response. People don't love things equally. That's just human nature. I think that kind of inconsistency is excusable. I don't normally eat animal meat, but there's but that's just a personal choice. If a dog or a cat lover still chooses to eat any kind of meat, I don't think there's any less they're any less consistent than my preferences. The two went at it, and support was split in the class. As class ended, the professor praised both for their well-constructed arguments. The big sister supported her brother's argument. She was also impressed by the handsome guy's logical persuasiveness and the articulate way he talked. Hmm? What's the matter, Brucey? It looks like you're about to say something. What is it? You're talking about Great and Hans, aren't you? Great and Hans? Who are they? They really are something. Do you really not remember them? They were in our year, and you had classes with them. You majored in psychology as well. Great and Jade in particular were very close. But half a year ago, two of them disappeared. What? Seriously? Jade, that girl was your friend. You didn't little mean to gossip about your friend's disappearance. Look at how sincere my eyes are. Are these the eyes of someone who gossips like that? How should I know? I'm not a telepath. I can't read your mind. Precisely because Great and I were so close, it makes sense that I want to figure out what really happened. Isn't that right, James? I guess. What's going on here? Even if she really wants to know the truth, why would she want to talk about it now? What is Jade thinking? As I went on, Hans and the beautiful guy clashed in heated debates of all kinds of issues. They became rivals and best friends. When the student association planned a big event, Hans formed a group with Gre Gret, or Great, and the handsome guy. And then Gret invited me, and the four of us ended up working together. It was really fun, but also super exhausting. After a successful event, Gret suggested going on an amusement park. Uh, going to an amusement park after classes on Friday to celebrate. However, Professor suddenly decided that Hans and I were in charge of the next presentation. We needed the time to prepare, so only Grant and the handsome guy made it to the amusement park. That's when something magical happened. Since the two of them were at the park, I started drizzling romantically. They both had umbrellas, but they acted like they didn't and huddled under the handsome guy's umbrella together. They were suddenly so close. She just said she didn't go. How does she know all of this? Dawson. It's just no, okay? Don't interrupt me. Wait, what? He stayed at the amusement park until it was dark, and they finally left. There was an amazing night view all around them. It was incredible. On a whim, Grant play pulled out her phone and played her favorite song, Don't Fall For My BFF. And the guy said, wow, I love this song too. And they had a great time talking about music. They walked through the evening, humming songs together. They got so close that their they looked at their hands had accidentally touched. And then, hee <laughs> hee. They were holding hands. Don't read too much into this. But are you interested in anyone at the moment? Hmm? There, there are two. I think you might have feelings for it. Really? Me too. Is one of them here with you right now? Yeah, it's you. That's the moment they confirmed they had feelings for each other. But... Feelings is such a vague word. 
Barry didn't realize she had an actual crush on the handsome guy until the day she invited him and me to the movies. A movie that Hans had recommended. Oh yeah, that movie was so good. It was, especially when the girl finds out that the guy she secretly loves is into her best friend. That was pretty heartbreaking. Hmm? So you've all seen the movie already. Oh well. I just happened to see it with a friend. Oh, I see. Grudge recalled the handsome guy saying that there were two people he had, two people he had feelings for. One was Grudge, and the other was even the one he went to that movie with. Thinking about it, threw Grudge into a jealous fit, and that's when she realized she had fallen in love with the handsome man, handsome guy, too. From that moment on, she couldn't get her head out of the clouds. Grudge herself thought a twenty-year-old shouldn't act so love-stricken. But what could she do? She was totally obsessed. Brad went on several dates with the handsome guy, and it was always romantic. She felt more and more in love, then finally she decided to confess her feelings. Thoughts. Right. I think we should just be friends. Oh, fuck! I see, you fell for the other person then. Sorry, I should have realized how I felt sooner. No, it's not your fault. Can you tell me who it is? I can't say exactly, but it's someone close to you. We should just be friends. Those words started it all. Hmm? I forgot to mention. That's the same music. Grant loved to cook. Every time she made steak, she invited me over to her place. The Saturday after she rejected, Grant invited me over again. And then we laughed and chatted for dinner. That day, Grud didn't say a word. The atmosphere was unusually heavy. Hans was out with a friend, too. The only sound were that of cutting and chewing meat. Hot steaks were usually cooked medium, but today they were rare. Whenever she cut her steak, I could see bright red juice bleeding out. Hey, do you think I'm kind of an attention seeker? Grud finally broke the silence. I decided on a disturbing topic. What's wrong? What makes you say that? You know how I told you that my dad was very strict? When Hans was little, my dad would lock him out on the balcony for every little mistake. Hans would knock on the window uh, all night long, begging my dad to let him in. Every time I'd let Hans back in the dead of night, my dad always went out the next day and beat Hans up. It was all my fault. He was deputed up, Hans, not you. I know, but if I were Hans, I'd blame my sister's meddling for making my punishment that much worse. I still can't mind my own business. I might look like I'm doing... I'm always doing stuff for Hans and the others, but I really do it for the attention. Everyone knows, but they're just too nice to say it. Whatever people will think about you, if you had just minded your own business back when I broke my leg freshman year, I don't know if I would have gone through it. Sometimes I think if I hadn't broken my legs, we wouldn't be such close friends. It was kind of destiny, don't you think? Besides, you're not a telepath. How could you know that Hans, or anyone else, thinks you should mind your own business? Sorry, you always have to make me feel better. You see that, we're friends, aren't we? Jeez, she always did this, that sentimental bitch. Ha ha, that's why she had no friends. Thanks, Jade. Agreed. Huh? Even though she felt insecure, she never said anything. She just pushed herself to the edge. She still wanted everyone to notice. How could anyone stand that? Hehehe. <laughs> but that's what made her so appealing. I love seeing Grant riled up, and sometimes I'd invite Hans, but not her, in front of her face. Or ignore her birthday say, oops, when was it again? A few days later. She guys could have seen her face. The poor thing was so adorable. Ugh, you're such a psycho. Oops, I got carried away. Let's get back on topic. So what's wrong? What's on your mind this time? It's the handsome guy. I thought he was interested in me, so I, I asked him out a bunch of times. 
It turns out he didn't like me after all. This was so annoying hanging out, hanging around him like that. I don't think. And you know what? He likes someone else already. That's the face of a sane person. Grit set the steak hard with her knife and red juice splattered across my face. Oops, I'm sorry. It's okay. You're the one who went to the movie with him, aren't you? I knew it. It's all your fault. Your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault, your fault. Your fault. That sounds corny. In that moment, I saw murder in her eyes, and that instant, she really meant to kill me. Just thinking about it. How many times Grant must have s simulated in her mind how she was going to push me down, run my struggling body, and thrust her knife into my face. Oh, I just can't. What the fuck? She just stared at me, and bit her lower lip. She put the knife down with a trembling hand and never touched me once. Why you? Why does it have to be you if I hate you? I lose the only friend who listens to my problems. I was like a bucket full of ice water. Th it was like a bucket full of ice water thrown in my face. I felt robbed and disillusioned. It had looked so promising, but Greg totally ruined the moment. You sound like Dad. It's never your fault, is it? I blame you. It's like I'm the bad guy. Perhaps Grit, the oh, perhaps the Grit, the villains in her life, who weren't quite evil enough, like her dad and me, were the worst. She wanted to shift the blame on us. We couldn't, because we weren't completely at fault. We shouldn't see each other for a while, and to be alone. As I listened to Grit's words, I told myself I had to be patient. Not yet. At least not now. Grant is still just a bud, but sooner or later she'll flower and secure her sweet nectar. After our confrontation, Grant got visibly depressed and had trouble sleeping even an hour a day. Every time she got the song Don't Fall for My BFF in her head, she couldn't stop the sadness welling up inside of her. Why not me? Why her? Why don't you want to love me? Why do you want hers? These thoughts continue to haunt Grit. They had all started and ended so quickly that Grit couldn't take it in. And now that I, and now that it had ended, time was so slow that Grit couldn't take it. She wanted to go back before any of it happened. Then perhaps she would only have had fun memories. Meanwhile, Hans knew that something wasn't right and asked Gret what had happened, but she refused to say anything. If you really understood me, I shouldn't have to explain. If you just know what I'm going through, I guess no one's world understands me after all. Hans didn't even know that Gret was in love. How could he have comforted her? But he didn't give up. Even if Gret doesn't want to tell me, I could be there for her anyway. And it was surprisingly well. Grant, the steaks you make are delicious. Can you teach me how to cook them? I want to learn. Really? Well, of course. I'd be happy to. With Hans on his side, Grant finally started feeling better. Grant's heartbreak was a blessing in disguise. Grant may have gotten rejected, but she got that much closer to her dear brother Hans. That's a good story, but wasn't this supposed to be in her legend? What about the doppelgangers? Who said I was done? You really can't diss Brucey for blowing his load too early. Hey, Greg refused to say anything. How do you know she was she had sleeping problems? What kind of thoughts haunted her? And what kind of interaction she had with Hans? Because of Hans! There's a whole other person. Listen to yourself, and you accuse me of... Doing that to my story. Excuse me? No, Jay didn't. What? 
nothing. I just don't think Jade fabricated anything. I think that's what actually happened. Wow, Brucey, you understand me better than my own parents. What? Brucey, you're usually such a skeptic. Has Jade put you under a spell or something? Do I need to wake you up? I'm not sure, but I get a feeling that Jade still has a Joker up her sleeve. There's a good reason for her. There's no good reason for her to make up little details. How much does she know? How does she know? What are her motives? That's the important part. One day at the end of the semester, Grant and I stayed on campus until nightfall to finish up some essays that we had at home together. On the way, I could tell Grant was holding something back. I thought he said she wanted to tell me something, but she wanted me to take initiative and ask him what's wrong. Like I'd never do that. So we just kept walking on and on. Parked near the campus when Grant finally opened her mouth. Jade, you're mad at me, aren't you? Hmm? I got pissed that the guy I fell. I like fell for you. Even though it wasn't your fault, I'm really sorry. It was such a shock. Grant was taking the initiative to make up with me. I mean, fuck. All I wanted was to see her emotions explode. It's okay, I still had a Joker left to play. Hey, forget about it. But I think you've misunderstood, Grant. Points at the park, and Greg turned her head to look. There, Hans had nuzzled up against the handsome guy's chest, and the handsome guy's arms around Hans's delicate shoulders. It wasn't a hug between friends, they were obviously making out. I did go to the movies with him, but just as friends. He was clear about that. The one he's really into was someone close to you. Much closer than I am. Ah. Oh, come to think of it. Last time I went to your place, was then Hans out with a friend. Who do you suppose that friend was? What do you think they did? Did they go to an amusement park on a beautiful night view? Did they make out like they're doing now? Was even hot and more steamy? You, you! Hmm? Not quite convinced yet. Fine, just listen to Lovford's talk then. You love that amusement park way too much. Don't you ever get tired of it? Never, as long as I'm with you. I'm having so much fun today. Thanks for asking me out. You look down lately. I hoped that would cheer you up. Well, Gret's been in a horrible mood lately, and she won't tell me what's wrong. I'm worried that she met some playboy who's stringing her along. If anyone ever betrays Gret, I'll skin him alive and eat his flesh. Heh, <laughs> silly boy. Little did, you, little did you know that the one betraying her right now is you, Hans. Ha ha, playboy, where did that come from? I ask you out, now you can think about it's your sister. Gret is will always be my number one. You're number two at best. That's some sister complex you got. Did Greg spoil you when you were little? I don't know what you mean. But my sister was always nice to me, yeah. Isn't Hans just the sweetest? Even during his date, he's thinking about Gret. But to Gret, his words only made her feel like Hans was using her to make himself look good. Like I said before, my dad used to beat me up when I was little. Gret didn't want me to be the only one who got punished. So she'd always try to help me out. We'd get beaten up together. How much she cared about me. But me. All I did was cry and let Gret console me, forcing her to say she was fine. Can't blame yourself, it's all your dad's fault. No, it wasn't my dad's fault. Back when our mom was around, he was really, really nice. Hans. My dad is not the one to blame. It was all because of the evil spirit. What? I didn't want to exercise the evil spirit. My dad would be back to being nice again. Oops, did I say something weird? That uh, what I meant to say was my dad was possessed by the ghost of his past. So he didn't mean an actual evil spirit. Got me worried for a minute there. Sorry, let's not talk about that anymore. So I reminded you of such horrible memories. It's fine. Hey, by the way. Grit says she's hanging out with Jade tomorrow and won't be back until night. You know what coming over in the morning? Grit taught me a secret recipe. 
<laughs> what a masterpiece. What's up, my lowest of lows? You had the gall to pester me and teach you how to cook. And that wasn't even for my sake. It was to seduce him. That's why I was raging through Gret's mind. I know because I heard it. Of course I'd love to go, but I'm not a fan of vegetarian meals. Vegetarian? I'm a vegetarian. Three vegetarian Hans. No, I'm not. So I eat me meat regularly, but I'm not a vegetarian, silly. But that time you criticized my argument in class. I thought you said you didn't eat meat because you're a vegetarian. Or you're just a picky eater. And what kind of meat do you prefer? Could it be the kind I'm thinking of? Oh, that's very naughty of you. Watch out, I'll eat you up. Someone's a. Mmm. Let's listen to your dirty talk. What would your sister think if she heard? Oh, she did hear, and she was very angry. And they kissed right in front of us. Oh, what? Erotic kiss with plenty of tongue. Of course, Gretchen and I were the only other ones, but it was quite the sight. The two lovers had no idea we were there, and made out passionately for a while. Careful on your way home. Don't get eaten by the cannibal boy. I'm more worried about you. Do you want me to walk you home? No thanks, I can take care of myself, you know. Okay, but you be careful too. Remember, I'll be waiting tomorrow. Don't be late. Don't miss out on the meat. That Grant might do something. She just walked away without saying a word. Maybe she's too angry to do anything. But I could see the bud of her rage growing larger and read her. Gret was about to bloom and secrete her sweet, sweet nectar. At that point, the handsome guy arrived at Hans's place with an empty stomach. But he found a table lined with meat dishes. Tuna sour pork, pork belly stew, smoked sausage, steak salad, all sorts of dishes. The main dish was Gret's special steak, cooked rare, just like the other time. What a face. We found a line, but oh there it is. Sorry, I accidentally got too many ingredients. Considering how early in the morning you had to come, I was afraid you'd be eaten by the cannibal boy. Here's the man eater. Oh, he's just a man eater. No need to fear him. There are plenty of vampires in the world. He took the blood of the poor bit by bit. Just to make their lives more luxurious. We just look the other way. Like those vampires among us. At least the cannibal boy kills you on the spot. You die without suffering. If I had to choose, I'd go for the quicker death. Besides, the cannibal boy treats humans just like any other edible animal. So many people are quick to judge cat and dog eaters when they have no problem eating chicken, pork, or beef. Compared to those people who discriminate between animals, at least the cannibal boy is morally consistent. He treats all living animals equally. Sounds like flaw logic to me. Really? You want to talk about that over brunch? You cats, dogs, humans, blah blah blah. James. You wouldn't feel like eating if you were there, would you? I'm not a freak like that. I'm not a freak like them. Forget about moral consistency or abuse. In my opinion, it doesn't require complex beliefs or a tragic past for a human to eat other humans. People talk about drooling over sexy bodies, refer to luxurious breasts as melons. Those kinds of expressions are all over the place, don't you think? Flesh English, Chinese, and Japanese are all eating related words to refer to that. We're so used to that kind of slang, that we don't think twice about it. Perhaps in the collective subconscious, eating is essentially a kind of possession, a kind of intimacy. Just like doing that. If eating is such an intense thing, do we really need to ask why can't we boy eat humans? Do we really need to dig into the tragic past he has? We want to fabricate his past because they're convinced he's a freak and a monster. He must have a very twisted past. He's not like us normal people. Um, you ever hear what you're saying? 
What I mean is, you don't need cats and dogs. And not because you're an animal lover, but because you're civilized. It's only because you happen to live in that kind of echo chamber. Excuse me. The only reason you don't need humans is because no one around you does. Because you're afraid that if you do, he'll be treated like a freak. Let's go back to the story. Hans, what kind of meat is this? Doesn't matter. Do you not like it? I do, I like it so much. I have to know what kind of meat it is. It tastes just like beef, it tastes like pork, and it smells like lamb. But it's not restructured meat. Maybe a hamburger that's 70% pork and 30% lamb might taste something like this. But it hasn't been ground, it's a whole piece of meat. Where'd you get this? Hmm. So you care about the type of more about the type of meat than how well I cook figures. You're great, aren't you? Where's Hans? What happened between us? Doesn't concern him. Don't drag him into this. Really? Do I have to spill it out for you? <laughs> and some guy looked at the bloody chunk of meat and put his fork down with the shoulder. <sighs> You'll be together forever. You even played the bad guy. You know that sissy would have been blue like hell. And now that he's all grown up, he's seducing guys I like behind my back. And your sense of taste is really something else. There was a guy and a girl, identical in every other way, and you chose the guy. Why, Hans? Why not me? Give me a reason. Say something. Alright. I'm actually really curious. Why are you so convinced that you and Hans are identical except for your sex? As the guys stood up and walked toward Grot, they slowly gripped Grot's shoulders. His fingertips sank deeper and deeper into Grot's flesh, causing her to contort in pain. But it doesn't matter anymore. The only thing that matters is that you and Hans are twins. So what? So what if we're twins? Nothing much. Just that you must be as delicious as Hans, I'm sure. What? Ew! Huh? What are that Grit and Hans went missing? What? But they weren't dead. They both bloomed in the wild abandon before withering in vain, frozen in their most beautiful moments. And all it took was a little push for a normal person, like Grit, to murder someone and feed the flesh of someone else. At the table, she was a cannibal boy too. Grit proved that, and she will live on forever in my heart. Jade. You and me, the handsome guy right here. We're all the same. He wants to just birds and feather. Is it the beliefs? A tragic past? None of that is necessary. Anyone can turn into an evil spirit. Part 3! Anyone can turn into an evil spirit! <laughs> Here we go! Uh, with these types of games, because they're, they're not very long, and I know that if I do like two parts, it's just gonna bleed into, like it's gonna be like two minutes. So that's why I keep going over so we can just one shot this boy anyway I'm sorry I spent way too much time on one urban legend I hope you enjoyed it Hans was slaughtered by his doppelganger Greg died the same way as her doppelganger they're both worthy of being called doppelgangers don't you think hehehe <laughs> Bullshit. That's not what a doppelganger is. Jade just brought up that topic as a way to give away what happened. What did she want? Did she really want to blackmail me? Or see my reaction? Or did she just want to prove her pet theory that everyone's insane? And why does she know everything about Gret and Hans by stalking them, spying? Or maybe she hacked into their devices. Jade, why did you tell us this urban legend? Oh, come on, you of all people should know, Brucey. Hmm? Hey, what the hell's going on? What are you two... Why are you two plotting to scare me or something? 
Is that why we're gathered in Jade's room? Hehehe. <laughs> I think I understand why Jade said her eyes were sincere. With the act of a writer, evaluating her work. When Jade herself is a jester, made to dance in her script. So now James and I have told an urban legend. Shouldn't you tell one too? His story of the Kimber Boy, and you don't want him to come knocking. You have to tell the story of his past to someone who doesn't know yet, right? What the hell, man? Why are you asking me this now? <laughs> Don't need that one. It's a funny, Lucy. Ridiculous, there's no past worth talking about. You civilized people eat plenty of animals. But you point out people who eat cats and dogs and call them savages makes me sick. If you can't eat some, don't eat any. If you want to eat some, then eat them all. Is that hard? Is it really that hard to be consistent? That's all there is to it, plain and simple. Stop that, Lucy. You gotta leave him some hope. Just look at James's face. Can't you see it filled with despair? How is the climax going to happen now? Hmm. You realize what a nuisance it is. But too many people will find out what I like to eat. I always set an annual limit for myself. But I guess I'm going to go over this year. Guess I should reward Jay's enthusiasm with an urban legend of my own. But I really don't like to conjure things up. So I'll let James here. Experienced it firsthand. I hate him. Hi, Brucey. Yay! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh my! That's K zero zero. Why was it so funny to me? <laughs> Ugh. It's so good. So that was the cannibal boy. Uh, very funny. And I really don't have anything to say. <laughs> I I don't think we should be eating cats and dogs. I really like to believe what you want. You do you as long as you're not hurting anybody. But I personally don't eat cats and dogs. Not my kind of thing. But yeah. So that's it. It's the whole game. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you later.